The tennis back underway after the Australian Open. We had some big tournaments happening this week and some big names actually playing as well. Both of the men and the women's tours. But let's go have a look at the results because we did have five tournaments over the two tours. Starting on the ATP side in Dallas, we had Tommy Pohl beating Giron 7-6-5, 7-6-3 to lift his second career trophy. Over in Marseille, we had Umber beating Dimitrov in straight sets 6-4, 6-3 to lift another trophy in his backyard. And on the clay, the first clay court event of the year in Cordoba, we had a battle of the qualifiers and Dadiri beat Bagnus 6-1, 6-4 in that qualifiers final. And all those players got a big boost in the rankings because of their wins. Over on the WTA side, we had in Romania, the Transylvania Open and Pliskova getting her first win in a while, beating Bogdan 6-4, 6-3 to win her 17th trophy in her career. And in Abu Dhabi, the biggest tournament of them all, the WTA 500 event, Rabakina wins her second trophy of the year, beating Kazakina in the final 6-1, 6-4, adding to the Brisbane trophy she won to start the season. So Rabakina looking really good to start 2024 and heading into next week's 1000 event, she is definitely the biggest threat. Let's have a look at the players outside the top 10 of the rankings and see who's gone up and down in the rankings. Umber, after winning a trophy at home, goes up three spots, number 18 in the world, which is actually a career high for him. And also becomes the highest ranked Frenchman overtaking Manorino. Dadiri, he goes up 60 spots, number 76 in the world. Another career high for him after winning Cordoba as a qualifier. So huge rankings boost for him. And Pliskova, she goes up 19 spots, number 59 in the world after winning in Romania. So the winners this week really getting a boost in the rankings, especially those players that were outside the top 20, really getting a good chunk of points to their rankings. Players that have dropped down in the rankings over the last week, Potapova. She dropped down seven spots, number 34 in the world after dropping the points from last year's Linz Open. Benchy. She goes down 14 spots to 36 in the world, of course, not playing due to being pregnant. She was the defending champion of Abu Dhabi, so all those points disappeared. And Wu, who won the Dallas Open last year in dramatic fashion, he goes down 109 spots to 248 in the world. So that one win, even though it was only a 250, really affected his ranking that he wasn't able to back it up in 2024. All right, let's start with the WTA rankings for this week. And not too much to speak of because we didn't have too many players playing. Sviantek, she stays at number one with Sabalenka at number number two, Goff at number three, but there was a little bit of a change in the middle with Rabakina overtaking Pagula to go to number four, which means that the top four players in the world are the slam champions in the world as well. So if you want to say there's a big four, that is probably the big four of the WTA right now. Jabir stays at number six with Zhang at number seven, Rondrusova at eight, Sakri at nine, and Mukova rounds out the top 10 for this week. But we do have a lot of those players playing next week in the 1000 event in Qatar. So we should see a few more rankings changes next week because there's so many points off for grabs. Over to the race of the finals and things are starting to take a little bit of shape but no change up the top with Sabalenka up the top Zhang at second, Ostapenko staying at number three but another little change in the middle with Rabakina going up two spots to number four after winning her second trophy of the year pushing Goff and Yastremska down to five and six. They didn't play or at least Goff didn't play last week and coming at number seven, Kazakina after making her second final of the year. She's into the top ten for the first time in the race of the finals. Coming in at number seven, pushing Fiontek down to number 9, and Noskova staying in the middle there at number 8. Kostruk, she gets pushed down to number 10, with Kalen Sky getting pushed out of the top 10 completely for the race of the finals. So, a lot of familiar names there that have either played the WTA finals in the past, or are currently in the top 10, so it's good to see we're starting to see a little bit of shape to the finals race as early as February. Going over to the men's rankings now, and we had no change to the top 10, because there wasn't that many points up for grabs. Djokovic, he stays at number 1, with Elkrez at number 2. Medvedev staying at number 3, with Yannick Sinner at number four and you can see there the gap between those guys and the rest of the pack is 3,000 points which is more than a slam because remember a slam is worth 2,000 so those guys separated themselves from the rest Rublev he's at number five with Zverev at number six very close in the rankings between those two Runa comes in at seven with her catch at number eight Fritz at number nine and City Pass he stays at number 10 for now, but a few of those guys are playing this week in different events. Of course, Rotterdam being the big one on the men's side of things. Guys like Sinner, Rublev, and Runa are playing that one, and then you've got guys that are playing the other smaller events, like Fritz is playing in Delray Beach, and Elka is actually playing on the clay. So we might be able to see some changes over the next week, but I wouldn't expect too many massive changes until Indian Wells in March. Heading over to the race of the finals now, and again, no real
got big changes because most of the guys didn't play. Sinner, still at number one with Medvedev at number two after they made the Australian Open final, of course. Zverev at three, Djokovic at four. Rublev stays at number five with her catch at number six. But we do have a change to the bottom part of the top 10 with Dimitrov getting to the final of Marseille. He goes up five spots into the top 10 for the first time, coming at number seven after making his second final of the season and unfortunately couldn't win the title, not like he did in Brisbane a couple weeks ago. But great to see him back in the rankings. He pushes Dimonor down to number eight, Fritz down to number nine, Elkris down to number 10, and Tabillo falls out of the top 10 completely, which is such a shame. Hopefully he can come back. We want to see Tabillo back in the top 10. It's been fun the last few weeks to see his name floating around, but he has dropped out of the top 10 completely to the race to the finals. So there you have it. They are the rankings. Not too many changes, of course. Not too many big names are playing uh, over the last couple of weeks, post-Australian Open, usually a lot of those players don't play until the big events come back. And of course, this week, we have one of the biggest events on the WTA, and most of the big names are playing. So expect some changes because the 1,000 events are worth 1,000 points, all of them this year on the WTA. And of course, Rotterdam on the men's side, the biggest tournament since the Australian Open, and Yannick Sinner's coming back. So that should be fun. But let me know down in the comments below, who are you most excited to watch next week? Because we have a lot of the ladies are playing, a few of the big names from the men are playing as well. I'm so keen to see how Sinner looks because he just won his first Grand Slam. He beats Djokovic in the process to do it. I mean, it's one of the biggest trophies. It is the biggest trophy of his life. How does he now back it up as a Grand Slam champion? The added pressure, the expectation. How does he do in Rotterdam? Because he was the finalist last year as well. So I'm really keen to see how he does in Rotterdam. But let me know down in the comments below. Who are you most excited to watch next week? They're the rankings for this week. Things are starting to take shape in the race to the finals.